We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions, working with you to make your game night better. Tonight's question comes from our most recent Patreon patron, Ron F. from Ron Talks Tabletop. During a recent Sunday brunch show over on YouTube, Ron asked, what are some underused board game themes? Well, thanks for the great question and your patronage, Ron. Both are appreciated. Thanks, Ron. So this topic is a great follow-up to our last AMA, our last Ask Me Anything episode, where we ended up spending a large part of that segment talking about themes in board games. Now, that particular talk was focused on theme integration, games that tied themes to the mechanics and how important theme can be to enjoying games. For those who didn't miss it, that was episode 186, Dog Days AMA and Point Salad Review, if you care to check it out. Now, quickly, we basically pointed out that theme matters and that games that are well tied to their themes can be easier to teach, easier to remember for players, and it can make dry games more interesting. It can broaden the audience for a game. And most importantly, the right theme can make a game more fun. Basically, despite how much we talk about mechanics and how important they are, theme can be just as important which is something I know we get called out on, and I think we're getting better at it, talking about the theme of the games we're reviewing and not just the mechanics in them. Because to me, I would say, like for years, I would have said that I'm much more interested in mechanics and theme. But to be honest, theme does matter. So looking at themes, there are, of course, a number of extremely common themes out there in the board game world. Trains, farming, trading in the Mediterranean, and colonization seem to be ever-present with zombies, Mars, and fantasy falling just a step behind. And Cthulhu. Everything is Cthulhu. But that's not what we're here to talk about tonight. Ron wants to know about underused mm -hmm. themes, not these super, super popular ones we see all the time, problematic as some of them are. Right, so let's get on to some underused themes that we'd like to see more of. And what we decided to do tonight was do an informal top 10. Each of us picked five themes we'd like to see more of. Now, none of these are in any specific order. We just started poking and thinking about what we were missing. All right, my first theme I would love to see more of is the insect world. Insects. Yes, there are some out there, right? Mariposas is about monarch butterflies. And I owned a game called Mermies, which was about ant colonies. And while bees is about bees, um, Honey Buzz is about the bees too. So actually, there's two bee games at least. And I'm sure there's others, but to me, just not enough. Like, it just seems like such a fantastic theme where you have hive minds and colonies and competing insects or even the things that animals build. Where's a game about building uh, spider webs? Or where's the game about termites trying to destroy a house? Or how about mating dragonflies over the pond? Or something about the study of genetics that uses fruit flies that we all learned about back in grade 10 science. No, to be fair, there is someone in our chat room who has a spider game yes. <laughs> in development. Thank you, Roger Dodger. Uh, but, you know, it could just be that this topic bugs a lot of people. All right. Uh, so my first thought was prison breaks. So who wouldn't want to play out their own Shawshank Redemption arc? Or are maybe you more of a cool hand Luke? Sure, there was a licensed game based on the TV series Prison Break, but that was during a time that licensed games weren't really so much designed as slapped together. Yeah. So lists on this topic I've seen have to really stretch to make the games fit. Because I'm sorry, Monopoly is not a Prison Break game, and yet no. it ends up on the list. That's really, really pushing it. Um, one escape game that I am curious about that I've always wanted to try, it's an older one, is Escape from Kolditz. I, this is POWs escaping from a prison camp in Germany, though, where I think you're talking more about modern prisons than, than POW stuff. Yeah, there's actually a number of POW camp escape games. Uh, there's even a licensed Hogan's Heroes game. Huh. Wow. But those aren't especially modern. Uh, Kolditz is actually turning 50 next year. Yeah, though it has been updated. There are updated versions of Colditz. I think it's Osprey that does it. So it does look pretty. It does not look like a 50-year-old game. Now, my next one is music. Except for some trivia games, there's plenty of those about various different styles of music. And that really weird toy-horrific game that Hasbro put out a few years ago called Drop Mix, 
which honestly didn't have much of a game, but you were like remixing songs together. I actually look kind of neat. I actually don't know of very many music games at all. Like there could be all kinds of opportunities here for music games. Like how about teaching tools to learn to read music? Or how about a Euro game where you're working together with the other players to compose a symphony? Or maybe you're trying to conduct a symphony or conduct a live show. Maybe even just learning to play specific instruments. Or how about forming a band, trying to get the group together, or going on tour? There are so many opportunities here for music games, and there are very few out there. Now, Roger in the chat is calling out vinyl, which is one. And I know Sean's waiting for his copy of Rap Gods to show up. So they're, they're out there. There are a couple. But really, there is tons of room, tons of opportunity for music. From playing music to listening to music to bands to touring, so many options there. I don't get it. And music is something everyone understands. Absolutely. And I, I have to say, you know, with my background in actually touring, it would be really interesting to do like a touring manager. You could have competing yeah. managers each trying to get their band more popular by the end of a you know touring season. Um, or what about the, the band promoter, right? You're yeah. all playing scummy promoters trying to rip off your bands or, or you could play like the scummy or not where you like get more money, but you're scummy and you might get fired. Like there's, there's so many opportunities. Yeah. Some real prisoners dilemma in the promotion world. There we go. Uh, and yeah, I, I am definitely waiting on that copy of, of rap gods. We'll uh, see what happens there. Now, another topic that kind of struck me and I started poking around was fashion. Now, there are a couple of really good one games about this, including one we'll be reviewing in the future, and we've been talking about in the chat room lately, Preta Porter. Yep. That being said, other than Preta Porter and Rococo, the pickings are shockingly slim, and you rapid, rapidly get into Barbie dress-up games. The fashion industry is a wild and amazing one, with incredible depth and history to it. The fact that it's not well represented in the gaming world is a true fashion crime. So rapid, rapidly getting into Barbie dress up games has just got me giggling here because I, I don't even know exactly what that means, but I've got lots of images in my head. <laughs> I, I totally agree. Um, like personally, yes, I need to get my copy of Predator Porter to the table. Uh, we were playing it. We were getting into it. But then a pile of obligations showed up and I'm like, oh, I bought this one. Let's put this off to the side so we can we can get the stuff that people are sending us reviewed first. So I do plan to get back to that one. And honestly, I don't know of very many. Like, yeah, Rococo, which you mentioned. Um, but there are, I'm sure there are more if you Google it, but like, and again, different styles of games, like why not the, um, like going down the catwalk game where you have to present the stuff or the behind playing seamstresses or designing clothes. Like when you play Predator Porter, the design, like, yeah, you have different cards for different designs, but how about a game about making patterns? Like, I just think there's lots of opportunities there. Yep. No, Absolutely. All right, my next one is hard science. Now, there are lots of sci-fi games out there that are semi-scientific, maybe based on some little bit of scientific fact, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about games based on actual science. And no, not all the random educational games you can get at Scholar's Choice. I want enjoyable, thematic, fun science-based games. Now, there are some examples. Um, I've heard really good things about High Frontier. High Frontier is a game about launching rockets into space that is like a super uber heavy um, brainy GMT game that that like written by astro astrophysicists or something like that, or rocket engineers. Yes, that's out there. Um, Buffalo recently put out Apollo where you're recreating the Apollo missions. And that looks really neat. Um, one I personally own is Kepler 3042. Now, again, this one's science based so it'd be kind of like the ring world of board games because you're sending out satellites and it's based on actual satellites but it extrapolates that you would go further but again it's based on hard science i would personally love to see more hard science games that are fun like i said they're, they're out there i can buy cytosis the game about cells and i can buy multiple um professor noggins games and stuff like that but i want fun sci-fi games yeah absolutely uh, now, in the same vein, I'm thinking, as opposed to hard science, computer science. So computer hacking, coding. Now, there mm. are lots of great computer games about this, but there's no reason not to see more board games, especially as a way to develop interest in careers in software and hardware, for that matter. Uh, so many great mechanics are available to support this. 
but most of the games just end up being more STEM educational scholars mm -hmm. choice type games or games that reference hacking, but yeah. don't really have any actual connection to the real world of computers. Yes. Um, yeah, by hacking, I don't think you're talking about Android Netrunner. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, like there's there's some great games on Steam where you are, you know, going out and you're trying to break into people's things so that you can make more money and, you know, do stuff like that. And, and there just aren't many games like that in the board game world. Yeah, there are some for kids. Like we we reviewed Code Monkeys and then, but those are more, more programming games, not really the hacking. And then there was uh, Robot Turtles, but like it was at such a basic level that they kind of fall into more of those not so fun educational games. <laughs> Now, personally, I do own one game about hacking, but honestly, it's not based on reality. Uh, it's called Resistor. And you're playing two AIs. There's a blue AI and a red AI. And supposedly you're in charge of the nukes. And it's kind of like it before games was two computers fighting against each other. But really, it's an abstract game about making connections with two-sided cards. Like, it's it's got a neat theme. Yeah. But it's the only thing I actually own that's really about anything about hacking and coding that's not a kid's game about move forward twice, turn <laughs> left, turn right. And actually, that one is interesting. But again, it's it's like one of those no one knows about it games. Yes, I, ch I checked on BGG and it's like, you know, there's 15 reviews for it. It's been out for five years. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's 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 uh, unfortunately it was indie published. And I don't think you can get it anymore. Right. It was kickstarted. I think it delivered. And that was about it. Fair. All right. My next one is cooking games. Now, again, there are some examples. There's Kitchen Rush, um, Just Desserts. Behind me, I have Macaron. And while looking at my own games, I realized Tiffin's kind of a cooking game because it's all about delivering lunches around town, though it's more about the, um, I don't know what they're called, unfortunately. It's in India, they have, I think they're called Tiffin's, these Tiffin's that they deliver. But that's pushing a little bit. What I want to see is a Euro game. I want to see a game about coming up with better recipes than my opponent. Or I want a board game version of Iron Chef where you're all competing to please randomized judges dealing with a subset of the ingredients each game. Or how about a game about smoking meats or aging cheeses? There are plenty of wine games out there. There's a couple beer games. Where's the one about, I don't know, like I said, aging cheeses or or the, um, what it would, I watched an entire documentary on Parmesan cheese and how it's aged in Italy and that. I think that's a fascinating. I want to see Ian O'Toole get together <laughs> with uh, Vital Lacerda and do the the formaggio or something they can call it about aging cheese. I think there are tons of opportunities. I think of playing Shiokadin. Uh, shout out to Sean Hamilton, not Sean from Hamilton. Uh, his favorite game of all time, one of my favorite parts of the Shiokadin series is they always have this Iron Chef thing going on where you just like collect ingredients throughout the game and then your chefs can battle each other to go up levels. Like I want to see cooking games. There's again, so many opportunities here. Absolutely. And I mean, to me, what, what kind of boggles my mind, I mean, you've got Vinhoff, right? You've got, you know, different uh, wineries all doing their thing mm -hmm. to make wine. How hard would it be to take that rough concept and switch it over to Michelin star restaurants? Yeah. Whoever ends the game with the most Michelin stars wins i mean yeah. it, and then and that's all about you know creating the best recipe and hiring the best chefs and the front mm -hmm. house staff and there's so many intricate aspects especially when you get into the high-end restaurant oh, tours yeah. that it's very gamifiable um of course you have to <laughs> you have to understand it all and you'd need to hire uh, a lot of consultants on that because it's a again it's a very deep sort right. of uh thing but one thing I noticed, uh, and I didn't break it off into a full topic on its own, but a specific act, uh, aspect of cooking I expected to find more games of is barbecue. And yeah, I'm there's... wondering if it's just too niche a North American idea. Maybe. I could totally, like you were talking about Vinhos, and I saw you were going to talk about barbecues, and I was totally thinking something like Vinhos, but with Southern barbecue. Yeah. Where you got, you know, Tennessee style and Texas barbecue and... Like, I, I, again, I watched a lot of food documentaries, surprisingly, on Netflix. It's something I enjoy. <laughs> and I watched this entire series all about going to all these barbecues where they smoke the meat for three days ahead of time and family traditions. And I might totally see a game about that. Except that is a very, that specifically is a very American aspect of barbecue. Yes. Even. Like, there's that, that gets really American. But so. that, why not? There's, there's other American themed games out there. Yeah. Games about American culture. There's a game about American culture. I'd be more interested in than revolution of 1828. <laughs> Fair enough. Now, my next thought was photography. 
Now, I know people will tell me about, for instance, Redwood, but that hasn't actually kickstarted yet. The, the, the Kickstarter is still going to be launching, I believe, next month, and it looks okay. fantastic, but it's not around yet. Uh, and while there are a few more like uh, these days, like Snapshot, far too many have the word selfie in the title or intro of the game. And now there's nothing wrong with selfies, but there is a wide range of photography concepts out there. And even the mechanics of ph photography with the exposure triangle mm -hmm. just sort of drip with potential mechanics usable for games about photography. Yeah, when I saw this one, the first one that came to mind is a fairly new game called Picture Perfect, which is all about setting up the perfect shot. But that's it. Yeah. I, now, again, we haven't played Picture Perfect yet, uh, but having read about it, it seems more like it's this, almost a clue-esque deduction game. And arranging people in items with the photographer is just kind of a that's why you're arranging the items to give it right. some some sort of frame. I actually kind of want to try Picture yeah. Perfect. It's interesting. But I don't know how much photography it would ever feel like. Yeah, it's more of a, a get people in the right place. It's a, it, it could be a home decor game. Yeah, right? exactly. There's, it, I it think... would, it, but it, but of all the, I'm trying to think of picture games. It's honestly the only one I can think of. Do I think Parks there, has an few, aspect of that? There's a few um, wildlife games. A lot of yeah. the, a lot of games these days that are into um, you know nature nature and wildlife preservation tend to focus on a, on a photography theme because frankly right. nature photographers do a lot of good for the environment uh, yeah. and especially letting people know about things but there's a lot more to photography than taking pictures of animals in parks <laughs> yeah so i'd love to see something about like getting the right gear and the right filters and the right lenses and all that that could make for a really in-depth euro really oh god now you're gonna start triggering all my uh photography buying <laughs> habits that i finally got rid of <laughs> oh no no enough about that Let's move on to something people take a lot of pictures of. Uh, my next one, actually, is my last one. My last one for today is pets. Yes, I know there's Cat Lady, and now there's a follow-up called Dog Lady. And while Calico is all about building quilts, and if you build them right, the cats come sit on it, there just aren't a lot of games about pets. Like, I want collecting pets. Give me a set collection game about pets or caring for pets. It'd be even cooler where you have so many pets and you have to have so much food in the house. And if you run out of food, the cats, start, the pets start ruining stuff or a vet game. There are a number of doctor games, actually, like like two years ago or even three, maybe five years ago. We probably could have put hospitals and doctors on this list. And we can't now because that's become a popular theme. I'd love to see a vet one, right? Something like um, clinic, but a, a vet version. Or like maybe even more of a find the perfect pets for different families or a pet training game. Um, you could even get into pet competitions. Like, I again, I like watching documentaries. I watched the whole thing about racing rabbits in the UK that was totally fascinating. And while the usual dog and pony shows, I think are great fodder for a board game. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, there's a interesting idea uh, I could see of sanctuary or animal rescue uh mm -hmm. as, and again we can really tap into tap into the nature and, and positive aspect of you know you are a nature rescue uh survive you know trying to help animals and you're trying to rescue in, in endangered animals who are you know around the city or out uh and things you know you get you get the call from the person who saw a squirrel that's looking sick you gotta go save the squirrels and things and you know. Or even like you mentioned that, and the first thing that comes to mind is Elizabeth Hargrave's new game, The Fox Experiment, Yep, which is all about trying to save a group of foxes and study them and everything. Talking about hard science mixed with pets. There you go. You got two of my themes in that one game. Well, I mean, we, heck, you can go straight into Australia and look at the uh, introduction of non uh, uh, the rabbits and foxes. Um, I'm yeah. sure there. I know there were computer games about that. I played them on the Commodore 64. But I can't yeah. think of any uh, actual board games about it. All right. I, I, we might, you know, when you finish, let's talk about a couple others, I think. We, we won't get into detail, but you just mentioned that. And I'm like, I want Sim Earth, the board game. <laughs> All right. Well, to wrap things up, uh, I picked a really underused theme. Mm. In fact, one I couldn't find any games specifically about. Now, this is a vital aspect of history, a massive shift in power dynamics and life on Earth, one could almost say. And that is the Battle of Menzikert in 1071, the crash of the Byzantine Emperor, and even the Crusades stem from this event. Yet no games? Come on, people. All right, being who I am, when I saw Sean put this in the notes, I'm like, I got to look it up. And there is one. 
Battle Games Magazine, issue number 24, you will find Manzerkurt 1701 from Daniel Johnson. So I'll admit, there doesn't seem to be a standalone game. Though, of course, Osprey has a nice thick hardcover book if you are looking to find out more about this battle. So I actually went and found a copy of that issue and (laughs) read through. And what it is, uh, it's actually a recreationist gamer who went through how they set up the battle and how to set up the battle uh, with enough info so that others, if they want to recreate the battle, they can. But I I don't know if you can really call that a game. It's more of like a a sort of like, hey, if you happen to have all this stuff, you (laughs) too can recreate the Battle of Benzikert. There you go. (laughs) All right. Well, uh, let's see what else. Uh, what else have we got? So what, what are some? I just want to throw some out there. That, that, like I said, you mentioned you mentioned uh, the 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 playing games on your computer, and I would love to see a good, like, like I said, Sim Life or Spore from EA. I, like, yes, there's um, Dominant Species, which I actually have behind me because ha- you can play insects. Right. Um, but it's like super heavy and complex. I'm like, I want some kind of genetics evolving animals game. Yeah, no, absolutely. I uh, there was the, Sim Earth and Sim Life were fantastic and way ahead of their time. The fact that yeah. they have never come back to uh, existence or been rebuilt or anything Just is weird. I there have to be some licensing issues out there that are stopping it. That's the only thing I can think of. Uh, but no, absolutely. There's a, a bunch of these strange sort of games like that. Um, uh, I mean, the fact that Mule came out as a board game means that there is a drive mm-hmm. for a lot of that old gaming sort of thing. Another one yeah, I was Mule? thinking of uh, uh, was the... the God game that we used to play, where you're actually the God Populous. Populous. Uh, you know, you know how many there aren't that many God games that I can think of where you are playing the God of you know of over your people, and you can choose to be either vengeful or considerate. All right, there we have a couple honorable mentions. I think we'll leave it at that. All right, well, that's it for our list of board game themes we would love to see more of. Mm -hmm. What's a theme you would like to see represented better in board games? Let us know about it in the comments below. Remember, we're here to answer your gaming and game night questions. If you got a question for us, head to tabletopbellhop.com, click on Ask the Bellhop, fire off an email to questions at tabletopbellhop.com, or hit me up on social media where I can be found everywhere. It's Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Now that you've heard our list of themes, we'd love to see more of. What do you and the lobby folk uh, have to add? You and, and the lobby folk. <laughs> what do you and the lobby have to add? And there's been a lot of chat tonight. Yes, I, I was trying not to fantastic. call out specific ones. Now there's some great stuff going on in the chat room here tonight. This is why you should join us live, folks. Uh, I'm just trying Instead to find where we started. So uh, Mar- uh, Roger Dodger is talking about March of the Ants. Yep, I've heard of that uh, one. As for the insects. And of course, Roger is calling himself out <laughs> himself out yes. as the uh, creator of a spider and webbing game. So uh, yes, I, that, that, was, that was somewhat intentional. And I didn't <laughs> even know he was going to be here. That's why I specifically called out a game about making spider webs. Uh, he did mention vinyl, which we called out during the show. And then he's tested a few games uh, about music stuff that uh maybe on the way yeah he was pointing out stuff maybe coming soon for some of these themes so uh ryan is saying he does recall a band management game but so uh, there there is something like rock band or something like that there is one Uh, it's a small box card game rock band manager it looks like Mm. yes rock band manager is the one i was thinking of i'd love to almost love to review that to see how actual how how realistic it might actually be it was not rated very well Mm. uh scalped ticket scalpers i don't know if he's coming up with a new title or if that's an actual game out there yeah Uh, i don't know roger yeah rock band manager was part of fancy flight silver line games back in the day so yeah it's it's not a newer one from 2010 right roger saying new that's a new game okay uh, we've got, uh, the new science mentioned, uh, talking about your hard science games from Ryan. Uh, what and he's also mentioning science? he hasn't seen the high frontier base game in print for a while. It is. It's, it's out okay. there. Uh, the new science is an older one from 2013 publisher Paris. That actually looks cool. you you basically put forward patents and stuff like that. That looks neat. Interesting. Discover hypotheses, publish papers. That looks heavy. Oh, it's not. It's a 261. 
Uh, and then when we move on to hacking and computers, Ryan mentions access denied and hacker. Uh, and then Android mainframe is hacker ish. But yeah, yeah that's, on, that's a little more ish. on the ish side, I think, ish. than I was uh, aiming for. Uh, so the latest version is High Frontier for All was published two years ago. And it's High Frontier simplified for other normal players, but it still has a weight of 4.83. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but yes, High Frontier for All is the fourth edition of High Frontier just published two years ago. Okay, there and, we go. and should be in print everywhere. I'm just checking access denied here on Board Game Geek. Uh, the, the Android Netrunner ones or whatever mainframe is kind of weird. It's you're blocking off paths. Kind of reminds me of um, what is that game? Quartro was that the one where you move forward one or put a wall that we mm. played a bunch of. I can't remember the name of that. Uh, so access denied, at least the only one I'm finding, is a print and play uh, contest winner. Um, uh, is that the 2018 oh, no, one or the 2021 one? That's or the, the 2018 one. Um, there is a 2022 one, which may be what they're talking about. Uh, two, two, two. Oh, I've got a 2002. That's what I think I meant. Which is a 5.4. Wow. Computer ca hacking card game. For three to six players. Actually, that could actually be, despite the fact that it's rated a 5.4, that could actually be interesting, depending on how it's implemented. It looks like one of those um, came mm -hmm. in a clamshell, like Ogre. Right. Um, but it actually does sort of remind me of some of the old, uh, like, BBS uh, yeah. wall game, <laughs> door games. Well, it does say you used to be able to play yeah. it online. Oh, okay. At Maybe it CCD really is then. Workshop. It's no longer available, but... Mm -hmm. well. Uh, Hacker, the another... board game. Yeah, t oh, 1992. There's a lot of them. Uh, 92, 91, 2009, Steve 2001, Jackson 1993. Yeah, it's Steve Jackson. Oh, okay, the Steve, Steve Jackson one, yeah. And then there's Hacker uh, 2, the dark side. Best modern, modern day board game in 1992. Oh, uh, yeah, there's, there's Hacker this Deluxe Edition. Hacker Deluxe Edition uh, from 2001 is uh, is sort of the newest, It maybe? looks a lot like Illuminati. Probably, I, I wouldn't surprise me. Uh, but that there could be go. interesting. I'll have to, I'll, I might, might there have you to go. check that one out. There are more hacking games than I would have thought. Here we go. Uh, and then Ron saying, yes, bring on the good cooking and baking games. No, seriously. <laughs> uh, Ron thought up uh, Daily Bread, the bread making game, just off the top sure. of his head. Uh, Ryan <laughs> thinks there is a cheese game. So in Viticulture, you can build the cheese house, which makes your places better. Right. Um, don't know about cheese making game. Uh, and then uh, while you're checking that, Darkling Blight... Oh, there's one called... No, oh. Cheesonomics. Okay, then. There we go. Strategic set collection, a cheesy original card game. Uh, this Again, this is quick. Yeah, you're collecting cheeses from around the world. This is not making cheese. This is collecting cheese. Kim Joy Kitchen is a food game. I, okay. I, is it actually good? <laughs> that, uh, that I don't I'm know. sure there's lots. I'm sure there's a Martha Stewart board game out there too. But oh, yeah. there are a lot of cheese games. Like cheese well, as a theme is Kim, not underused. I got Kim Joy's Magic Bakery, which is actually a seven from two th from 2021. There you go. Um, Race for the cheese, flying cheese, Taco Cat, extra cheese. sharp expansion. Cheese, <laughs> please say cheese. Guilds of London, new guilds. Cheeseonomics has the extra sharp expansion. Oh, there yes. you go. So Chuck E. Cheese Sky Tubes. There's a board game based on the Sky Tubes at Chuck E. Cheese. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. Just okay. Cheese is not an underused theme. My bad. There, yeah, there's so cooking is of, cheese isn't. Yes. Aging cheese. Cooking with cheese is what I was looking for. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just amused by how many just came up. Kim Joy Kitchen. That's cool. Hmm. Uh, and then uh, moving on to our next topic. Uh, do, do, do. Okay, oh, keep... moral. That's a good one. Oh, yeah. It's about mushrooms. Yeah, yeah. Mushrooms is, is uh, mushroom. yeah, it's like collecting mushrooms. I don't know. It's not really cooking with mushrooms. Mm, fair. I, I avoided food games because, again, then you get into the wine and that uh, specifically cooking, like making recipes, combining ingredients. That's what I want. I want, I want Euro games about cooking and cooking competitions. And now Ryan called out specifically hibachi, came out in 2021 and already has two expansions. Uh, and that so that's that's arguably a barbecue game. I think it's 
Uh, know, Japanese, Japanese barbecue. barbecue, but it's still, or maybe you know, a little bit of that Mongolian concept. But yeah, That's the most true. successful teppanyaki it's... chef in hibachi. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's hibachi specifically a town in Japan. I believe it is. Yes. Okay. That's <laughs> um. Um. Of course, it's anthropomorphic animals because of course it is. Well, yes, of course. <laughs> uh, da, da, da. the type of Japanese cuisine. Sorry, I'm just confused. Roger's pointing out he misses his dark room. Uh, yeah, I don't have a real dark yeah. room, but I do have daylight dark room uh, equipment, so I can still process. Uh, oh, film. that's cool. Um. Uh, let's see. I go only into pets. Oh, there you go. So you can cook them. So there. Yeah, there it's, it's at least got cooking elements and moral. There we go. So getting into pets. Uh, Roger brings up Dungeon Pets. Yeah, Dungeon Pets is is one game, though uh, the fantasy version of pets. But yes. Ryan, Ryan mentions too many poops, and I'm not sure if he's having some uh, difficulties or if that's a game. <laughs> uh, oh, what's a, there's there's one called Crazy Cat Lady that, that uh, comes with a ton of cat miniatures. That Roger, I kinda Roger is pointing out in your in your pet game, if you don't feed your cats, they eat you. Um, uh, that, that that'd be a little dark, but honest. <laughs> Unfortunately, honest. it's pretty honest. Yeah. Um, uh, an adoption a pet adoption game would be great absolutely no, seriously yeah, yeah. like there's a here's bunch, a bunch of, of families food. here's a bunch of pets and you got to match them up somehow well apparently too many poops is an actual game all right okay um uh no there's like again with the sanctuaries the rescues the there's just lots uh, of room uh, the adoption yeah there's a lot of room okay for too good... many poops has the cutest cover on a game oh god well at least i think so this actually looks pretty good <laughs> um i i have to say you know like there's a big thing these days where you want good uh, games that have a good moral message and, yes. and the pet, there is a lot of that available yes, in the pet world. Um, the only thing you have to watch out is whether or not the, the argument of that pets in general are bad as a rule. It, yeah. There's that. But if you want to accept the concept of pet ownership, then mm -hmm. there are some really good themes available within that. And I do mean pets, not zoos. There are plenty of games about zoos. Yep. And circuses. Yep. Both which of which are, are not necessarily the best ways to maintain pets. Uh, and yes, chocolate making game from uh, mentioned from Spitz. Oh, yeah, chocolatiers. Chocolatiers. Yeah. We own that. Yes. Deanna yes. made me buy it. Every yep. time we bring up that game, I have to make fun of Dean and say <laughs> she made me buy it and we haven't played it since. There you go. A um, game about making toilets, though. Uh, Roger, when we were talking about uh, the evolution type games, Roger mentioned Devolve, the anti-evolution game. That could be interesting. I, I oh, my Primordial Soup is awesome. That is, there's a game Sean needs to play. It's a fantastic game, but like you don't evolve past like three celled organisms, right? right. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I want more. I don't know. I want a genetic. Someone did a genetics game, I think, about the what are they called? Something Parisi squares? No, that's like the Star Trek thing, isn't it? Right. I don't so know what you like. He's, he's mentioning that the uh, the chocolate making theme is rather weak and could be swapped to anything in chocolate. Oh yeah, games. well yes, that that was my point about it is it is <laughs> the uh, the game about making when the the person who taught us the game said it was a game about making toilets. Right. I'm like, isn't the name of the box Chocolatiers? This is a dude who works for Mayfair Games. Who's like, ah, the theme in this is just dumb. You're just going progressing from step one through eight, and they could be anything. Right. Uh, we did mention Calico. That was actually mentioned when we yeah. were in the actual main discussion. Uh, and then... Uh, oh, Fahrenheit, well, Fahrenheit 451 is one of Roger's theories for a board there game. You go. Uh, Roger's oh, listening to a Tabletop Bellhop podcast. Who listens to them? Roger's mentioning Satellite Wars. I don't know of a game called Satellite Wars. There's Orbit War or... Uh, well, it's a Kepler 2842. I always forget the 3842. That's actually about launching satellites and trying to get yours in the proper position and stuff like that well orbit war is an actual simulation of satellite warfare in low earth orbit okay uh, <laughs> so uh there are there are games out there about that one um spy satellites oh and roger's got another roger's uh, got lots of theories spy satellites there we go no it's cool uh no no problems pritzka yeah no actually we're, uh, we feel free to call it call out any games we, we're happy to encourage orbit um, war is from 1977 wow <laughs> Uh, and then we get into uh, sports management. Yes, we do already have sports management. There, there's a lot uh, of sports management games out there. Yeah, there are a surprising number of sports management games yeah. out there. Which is why it's strange that there aren't that taken to other places, like the yes. like the, the touring management or or whatever. Um, I, I mean, if you want to make... Here, I am going to give out a free idea to the world. 
I will not demand uh, royalties. Get a K-pop team, like build build your K-pop group and market them, and yeah. you know, and make money off of them. Just, just boy band the board game doesn't even have to. Well, be K-pop boy band either. boy bands out. K-pop's in. So right now, okay, sure. right now, K-pop <laughs> is hot. Um, and you can abs- you can make a mint off that. The, the K-pop fans are just ravenous for material. Uh, and if you get some license, if you get any licensed uh, characters or anything, images or anything like that, they will, you know, even if they never play it, they'll hoard it up. Uh, yeah, there, <laughs> there are a number of BTS games out there, but you probably don't want to play any of them. Yeah, no, absolutely. But I'm thinking <laughs> you could actually make a good game of yeah. K-pop band management or and then yes. re-theme it to boy band management if, if boy bands come back or re-theme it to, you know, whatever when they come, ba- when they, Girls they come back in. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I want to play the Spice Girls expansion for the K-pop game. Because, yeah, I mean, you know, again, these whole band churning manufacturing uh, concepts, yes. they just keep happening and they just move to the next cool thing. No, like Blood Bowl team manager, then you got baseball highlights, football highlights. Then there's the whole fantasy football, which is basically a board game. Um, Stratomatic. Like, there aren't a lot of sports management games, really. Like, when you break them down, there's actually probably more food games. And there are... there's a cycling manager game. Like, the, like the, pick there a, are a number pick of a them. sport, and there's probably a management, a, at least a management game for it. Yeah. Um. All right. Have we gotten to the end of the chat room? Like we can keep going, but yeah, no, we, we <laughs> finished this segment. We finished all we're, the uh, all the earlier discussed during the episode stuff, and yes. now we're moving on. See, Roger's just trying to suggest all his games so that right. you know, in ten years <laughs> when he's super famous and everyone's buying his games, you heard like, it here you first. Heard folks. it here first. Yes, there we go. Because yes, I we played uh, what was it? Hockey fight in Canada. I think is what he called it. We tried <laughs> one of his prototypes, but not a lot. Not not a lot of uh. Heck, cfl themed board games i bet you there is i bet you there is I, got I really do I, like I, <laughs> I think i can picture one actually i think i played one with my dad back in the day um uh, sports action canadian, canadian pro there, football. i was close sports action canadian pro football cold yeah. snap canadian pro football canadian football game uh <laughs> what was the one i was oh, i can't remember now i can picture it the board was a football field and you like actually like bet on different things uh, canadian <laughs> armchair football yeah, I think that might have been it. That might have been armchair football. Yeah, I said I remember playing something with my dad because that's actually how I learned the rules to football. Like once he gamified it, it made a lot more sense because just watching football with no one explaining it to you, you're like, I don't know. <laughs> they run sometimes, sometimes they kick, sometimes whistles get blown. Sometimes when they throw things, it's good. And other times it's bad. Oh, I don't and here know you what's go. happening. Gridiron Master from 2007 has two separate versions you there can you buy go, the Canadian NFL in US. or the CFL version there. And that's actually a, no, it's not a great game, but it's a, a reasonably solid game, yep. I think, for football uh, lovers. My favorite sports management game would still be Blood Bowl. Oh, and not be real sports, but <laughs> most enjoyable game I play. And I'm talking like real game Blood Bowl. I'm all for Blood Bowl team manager, the deck builder too, but not everyone loves that one. 